Hello, my name is James Morris, and I got three A stars in maths, physics, and chemistry. This is a video I wish I had, and to be honest, I hope it helps you, and I'm happy I can make it. So, the first tip is that take responsibility for your life. So, the generation that we live in at the moment is that you normally blame everyone else for what's actually happening to you. So, for example, if you're bad at maths, you blame the teacher. Oh, such a terrible teacher. But actually, it's because you're not learning it right, or you're not listening, or you're not teaching yourself it. So I knew this before I went into my A-levels, and I decided to teach myself the subject before I went to the lesson. So I would get a specification out, and I'd make a flashcard on every specification point in that topic before I learned it. So that when I went into the lesson, I'd have flashcards on the topic, I'd have understood it before, and I'd actually have good questions to ask the teacher. And I could actually help the people around me and teach them. Second is to work early, as I've just said, because it'll make you benefit much better if you work before the exam and not cram at the end. Three, my system. So, as I've said before the lesson, I would make flashcards. In the lesson, I would edit the flashcards, ask good questions, create new flashcards that I would add into my Anki system. I'll talk about that in a bit later. Then, I would do topic questions. And from those topic questions, I would edit my flashcards with the keywords of the mark scheme. From the mark schemes, I would then, and from the tests, I would then make new flashcards, consolidate the flashcards. And then when I went in to have a topic test, I would then create more flashcards with what I got wrong in that topic test. And then onwards, when we go into different topics throughout the year, you constantly review the other topics by reviewing the flashcards in the meantime. So that when you come to your mock exams, it's so much easier because everyone will be so stressed about cramming. But you've been doing it consistently, steadily, steadily so that you cannot have any stress and you have a good state of mind and it'll be easy. Number four, state of mind. Have good sleep. Sleep at least nine hours. So important. If you want to learn something from memory, so much studies out there that if you have bad sleep, you're not going to memorize anything. And state of mind, whatever you do to de-stress yourself, go out with friends, run, do exercise, play a musical instrument, anything that has a hobby to you or anything other than A-levels because it isn't everything and it isn't everything about life. You can do other things than A-levels. Five is forget. What do I mean by forget? So I mean be humble. I mean be always a student. Even when you end up getting A stars from using this technique and the systems I'm about to describe to you, and I have it described to you, be humble and always be a student. And with your teacher, always ask good questions and never get complacent. Six, teach and talk. So, what would I mean by teach and talk? So, in the lesson, when you've done the pre learning and understood it before you went into the lesson, Teach your, teach your friends the topic and actually help them understand it as well because that will give you a bit deeper understanding. What do I mean by talk? So when you read a question or you're doing an answer or you're doing your flashcards, read the question of the, uh, the flashcard out loud. Read it, ask yourself, oh, what is the definition of a supernova? And then you mutter the answer, then you review the flashcard. So I've been talking a lot about flashcards, but how are you going to make so many flashcards? I ended up making 800 flashcards for each of my subjects. I know that's a lot and it is a bit over excessive, but that's what I did. And I use a software called Anki. Anki is absolutely incredible because it uses two things called active recall and space repetition. Why is it so great? Because one, it consolidates it into one software and you don't have to carry around big amounts of paper everywhere and you can get it on your phone and you can do it anywhere. Say you're like in the lunch hall or you're just a commute to school or commute back to school. You can end your revision there. You can go home, you can just relax. Number eight is to have a good time management system. A guy called Carl Newport, the author from Deep Work, is that he says to time block your time. So for example, it looks like this. 
you space out seven to five or seven to whatever time you want, have a block of time for what you want to do. Have your task on one side and you draw it to the space that you want to do the work in. I would do a weekly review of the things I wanted to get done in that week, the past papers or the amount of flashcards I wanted to review, the topics that I needed to make new flashcards on or the past papers I needed to get done. Having a good time management system really helps and really helps you to just space out and just make it really simple and actually let you have a bit more of life than A-levels because you say, oh, I'm only doing two hours a day of A-levels and the rest is my time. I don't have to worry about anything else. Nine, focus on actually what matters. What I mean by that is focus on doing Anki, focus on doing past papers and the lag measure will follow, the A star will follow and focus on getting really, really deep in your learning and having very high intensity into one task. How I did this from starting out with dyslexia and slowly adding it up and slowly getting into a better groove of focus is I created a habit of it. So I would say six to nine, I will be in the study. So the place that I did my work and I will be doing Anki. I will be reviewing my Anki. I'll be making Anki. I'll be doing a past paper. But saying that phrase from six o'clock to nine o'clock, I will be in said room doing said behavior. That's how you create a habit and that's how you make it so much easier. And then you know what you're doing and you can't make another excuse to not do it and be lazy. 11. I just want to say good luck for your A-levels and I hope you do amazing. I hope this video has helped you. And the final tip I would like to give is look at A-levels as a challenge. Look at it as an ability and an opportunity to deepen your focus and your ability to learn and to teach yourself a subject. Because if you can get that ability and if you can teach yourself anything, it's such an incredible superpower. And I wish you the best of luck and good luck with your A-levels. I hope you get three A-stars. I hope you get to the places that you want to be. Thank you very much. Goodbye.